Hello and welcome back to Ben Wallace Media. Folk like myself, who enjoy video games and the music of video games, do happen upon some very niche, cool software now and again. The software that I'm going to be discussing today is one such software, Gashisoft's GXS CC. <laughs> As is written on one of the distributor sites for the software, GXSCC is a wonderful program that emulates a Famicom, Nintendo Entertainment System or SCC Konami sound creative chip in order to play MIDIs. Any MIDI, either made by a third party composer or myself, can be converted into a multi-track 8-bit rendition. A little later on in this video, I'm going to do a brief demonstration on how the software works as it is quite cool, but for now I'd like to explore MIDI's a little bit more. MIDI, or Music Instrument Digital Interface, is a type of instrument, powered sound, data file and language that has become a standard, especially on 90s and 2000s video games, for composing music for games. Developed by the president of Roland, Ikataru Kakahashi and Sequential Circuits President David Smith, they came up with MIDI as a means to fill a need, a way to allow instruments to sync up with digital audio workstations. This was all DAWs. This was done around 40 years ago. MIDI now has a plethora of functionality, for example, notation, synthesis, sampling, general composition, also alongside audio and of course video games. MIDI can be quantized to fit in time with tracks better time signatures can be changed, song keys, plus a whole other bunch of settings and configurations which is now possible thanks to modern DAWs. I will include reference material in the description if you want to learn more about how MIDI works in depth. Throughout my years of composing, at this point well over seven, MIDI has been a fundamental part of most of my compositions and without it I'd have no way of being able to even send a signal from a keyboard, as I've just demonstrated, into a DAW. Highly important. Where does GXSCC come into this then? Well, I found this software way back in secondary school and found it allowed MIDIs to be played through an 8-bit-esque multi-channel mixer. It's higher quality than any Famicom or Game Boy could hope to produce and allows for an idea of how a piece of music would sound under those bitted fonts. It should be noted, however, that whilst this software is easy to use and is free, it does not take the place of a traditional DAW when creating a track of this type. It is merely a way to emulate the older sounding Famicom tracks using MIDI files as a means to achieve this. It has been highly criticized for this, however, I still believe it holds a valid purpose and love it all the same. Even if it doesn't sound exactly like the OG Nintendo consoles do, it could be said that it is at least a step to getting there. Okay, so this section of the video I'm going to be demonstrating how GXSCC works. And it's, it's very simple. You take a MIDI file, so this is a MIDI that I converted from a composition which I composed about a year ago, maybe two. Um, it's a version of Hall of Mountain King, which is Edvard Grieg, which was originally composed many, many hundreds of years ago. Uh, it's a modernized techno version of that, so I'll, I'll, I'll play a little bit of it. Yeah, so that's 30 seconds of that. Um, what I did was I put it. Th I put the 
MIDI, uh, specifically the MIDI uh, sections of this track through Logic, um, there's an export uh, option where you can basically turn it into a MIDI file. Uh, it won't include it didn't it won't include the drum beat unless the drum beats are also MIDI, which in this track they aren't. So I'll play a little bit of that. Another thing with Logic is it comes through as it comes through as a uh, well as this as a piano. I'll explain it in a minute. So it's the same piece, it's just MIDI form. Um, with Logic, it it will export all of it out uh, on that MIDI option, um, but it will do it as pianos when played through Windows Media Player. Um, Logic isn't really... I mean, maybe there is a way to do it now. I haven't used it for over a year, but uh, it's unlikely. Um, uh, there are programs specifically built for MIDI, and when you transport those trans uh, export those out into other programs they will play with the specific set instruments that you assign to them for this piece I didn't there probably is a way to do it in logic I just haven't explored that and that's not the uh, that's not the obviously not the topic of today's video um, this is where GXSCC comes into it so you take the, the mini file which is the one I've played I've played both versions of that it, mp3 yeah, sorry dot wav into dot mid with the midi parts and then simply you drag it in and what's, what what it's doing is it's converting that through a it's emulating that through a chip tune so it comes out as somewhat realistic 8 bit Kind of a step towards how it would sound on an NES or a SNES or a Famicom. Yeah, I mean, I I, I had a lot of fun making that tune, but yeah, as I just said, it it, it emulates, it converts it into a emulated chip tune arrangement for the a step towards how it would sound if it were on a Famicom or a set. It's not going to be completely realistic because there's too many channels here. It splits it up into way more channels than those consoles would have had back in the day, but it's very cool. I mean, another example is a uh, uh, a MIDI from a Pokemon game. This was made by someone else. Uh, I'll include the link to the website. I got it off in the description below, but I'll play a little bit of this and then you can see it, it, it is possible to use up more of these channels. To all any Pokemon fans out there, to any Pokemon fans, you know this is the legendary battle theme from Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald. Uh, track from almost 20 years ago now. So as you can see, it it's using the arranged uh, instruments and the way it's been composed and configured, it's able to, GS, GSXCC can read that and convert it into a multi-track chip tune arrangement. It's really cool. Um, but as I said, as I've obviously going to cover in, in the video, or already have or whatever, this is not a program for composing. It is merely to listen to what a MIDI file should should kind of sound like not not truly but it's a step towards what it would sound like on one of those old consoles it's not true 8 bit it's not true at 8 bit but it's a step towards that and obviously uh there is a way to sorry is there is a way to export out um Uh, it's going to take its time doing that, isn't it? You, 
you can export it into a WAV. I would only recommend doing that on your own work if you do it on someone else's. Only use it for your own uh, intentions. Don't obviously don't publish it because you are technically plagiarizing if you do that. But it, yeah, it's it's a great program if you want to convert a MIDI track into a step towards eight bit. Then use this if you want to obviously make your own um, eight bit track ship tune track from scratch maybe look to a DAW that, that is built for that there are many options out there but yeah that's uh, that's this section of the video done <laughs> The developer of GX SCC is a company known as Gashisoft. The only real reference I could find on this company is a very underdeveloped, seemingly old website. So I apologise for not being able to source anything better for this section of the video. I also had to run the site through a translator, as it is written entirely in Japanese. It appears they have only solely developed GX SCC, which was then leaked and it is now available to everyone, much to their chagrin. Their description of the software is GXSCC is a quite unique MIDI player to support mid, SMF, RCP formats, MSF being a standard MIDI, and I couldn't find anything on RCP. It doesn't depend on sound devices, plays with emulating SCC sound chips, which once had been embraced as an external module for Konami's MXS Microsoft ASCII Corp home computer architecture cartridges like Nemesis 2. It follows that all MIDI songs are changed into chip tunes. I think the takeaway from this is reasonably clear. Gashisoft obviously probably had plans to develop this further and chose not to and chose not to once the entire software was leaked. Now it remains as a remnant of a discontinued but all the same brilliant bit of software that retains a function. It's a shame we'll never get to see where it could have gone, but all the same I'm glad to have been able to use this little piece of history throughout my years of composing. To Gashisoft I say, Aragaso. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a dislike. If you would like to see more of this kind of video, perhaps even consider subscribing. Finally, leave a comment telling me how you think I did today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Sayonara.